What's up, y'all? Bricks from Bricks Fitness. We're in the gym early as hell today. We never work out this early. It's about 7.45. But the reason is we're going on a five-day tour with my bro, Rob Hill Senior. And today we'll be in D.C. And then Philly. And then New York. And then back here. And then Miami. So, we're trying to get our workout out the way so we can hit the road. Anyway, real quick. I wanted to, to give a quick tip to beginners about how to create their own program, create your own program. I remember being a newbie and like overcomplicating it. I don't know how many sets to do. I don't know what exercises to do. This is what you do. First thing, make a list of, go online and make a list of all the compound exercises and split them up into body parts, right? So have this list on you. Put it on your phone, put it in your notes, something. Every time you go to the gym, right? I would start off doing sets of 12 to 15, and I would choose one exercise per body part, right? But the compound movements, they'll hit multiple body parts. The main exercises you would need to choose from are pushes, which are like bench press, incline bench press, chest exercises that actually work the chest, the shoulders, the triceps, pulls like rows, lat pull downs, there's a ton of them. And then you have your squats uh, and your lunges. So what I would do is, let, let's try to simplify this. Choose a pull, a push, a squat, and So I'm doing sets of 12 to 15, but I'm doing slow and control reps. I'm squeezing at the bottom of the rep. I'm focusing on the eccentric part of the motion, which is the motion, like for instance, on a bicep curl, this is concentric and this is eccentric. This is where the money is on the eccentric portion. So I'm focusing on the eccentric and I'm squeezing at the top. You wanna squeeze the muscle with your mind. You can add tension with your mind. Now, it's an art to picking your weight, right? You want to you want it to be heavy enough to challenge you, but you don't want it to be so heavy that you're so exhausted after your reps, after your set that it takes you 5 minutes to recover. So, keep that in mind. You want to keep your rest time, especially if you're trying to lose body fat and just maintain muscle. You want to keep it under 90 seconds. And that's kind of hard to do if you're going super hard every single set. Find a weight that works best for you that allows you to recover. So I'm lifting on the lighter side today because I'm doing about 12 to 15 reps and I want to focus on, like I said, the eccentric part of the motion, which is the downward part. I'm going down real slow. I want to squeeze at the bottom or the top of the lift, depending on what I'm doing. And I, I, want, I want to focus more on the execution of smooth control reps versus just swinging heavy weights up. Let me share something that I figured out, right? You know it's times you don't feel like doing stuff, you don't feel like exercising, you don't feel like working on your project, you don't feel like mowing your lawn or whatever the case may be. This, this, this feeling inside of you that just makes you not want to do something, what's that? That's designed to keep you where you are, right? So 
if you desire change, if you, if you desire growth, I'm gonna advise you to start ignoring that little feeling and go against it. Whenever you don't feel like doing something, that should cue something in your head to make you wanna attack it even more because that's the pathway to change. That's the pathway to growth. <sighs> All right, let me finish this cardio. All right, so I got the workout done and out the way early. So now we're getting ready to go pick up the rental car. The hardest part about traveling for us is the fact that we bring our food and it's add that to luggage and being in, on a time crunch, it makes things a little more difficult. But that's our food. Let's see if I can give you a sneak peek real quick. All right, that's just the drinks. Yeah. That's the food. Okay. So we got all our Tupperware. What's in there? Turkey, um, broccoli, red potatoes, tuna fish, there's something else. Boiled eggs, and I think that's it. And then we have treats in there. So we're gonna be gone for four days on the road. And I know myself, if I bring food, I eat at least 75% better than I would if I didn't bring food. So it's difficult, but you gotta you gotta plan. You gotta you got to anticipate any pitfalls you may run into. Cause I know for me, it's like it's hard for me to stay focused when I'm on the road. So this is how I prevent myself from fucking up. So we're picking up Rob real quick and then we're hitting the road. Alright. So look, we're about to hit the road to DC. Uh, I'm, I'm going yeah, the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, Tripping. Yeah. Rob, real quick, what's just explain in a few words what the event is about. <laughs> it's about um, being present. It's about trusting yourself and working with the people around you to get the best out of life. That's it. A beautiful day. <laughs> Yeah, I tried to make it as succinct. No, you don't go straight. Uh, I try to make it as succinct as possible. But yeah, no. So yeah. Being present, man. Here. So we're heading in. First stop, D.C. Tomorrow is Philly, then New York, then back here in Virginia, and then Miami on Wednesday. So we had to stop because Candace was a girl, and she had to use the bathroom. I'm also about to give me something to eat real quick. She's preparing tuna. We got the fold -its. No, they were all out, so we got you this. Okay. This, got, this has less, the same mm -hmm. calories. So let me put y'all on to this Dave's Killer Bread. So I'm about to eat this on some tuna, and I got my pineapples. You gotta be prepared. It's mental about this. It's like something I need to click on so that once I go out, I can still make sensible eating choices but I don't I don't do it for some reason. I don't know why. You feel like that's not the space for it. Yeah that's what I'm saying. But I, I want it to be the space for it. I want to be able to go either way. I want to be able to consciously make that decision instead of letting it be an impulse. It's an impulse for me right now to automatically want to get chicken wings when I go to Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm -hmm. When I can get a salad there. You feel what I'm saying? I, that's an option. Right. That but an option. yeah, but I I don't like in my head is like if I'm at Buffalo Wild Wings, I gotta get Buffalo Wings. You know what I'm saying? And that's I gotta I gotta work on that. Yeah, it's hard to turn it off too. Yeah, it maybe is. that's a tough example too, Buffalo Wild Wings. I mean, yeah, but that's I mean that's yeah, an extreme no, example. It's, it's, it's a very but there's salads. One. There's yeah. a way more. There's healthier options than just getting you know wings. Right. At the at, at Buffalo Wild Wings. So, do you not get a salad because you feel like you just get a salad at home? Or? Yeah, exactly. I eat a salad at home. When if I'm out, I don't want salad. <laughs> but for someone who travels a lot, I need to get in the mindset of okay, you know, every time you go out, you don't have to eat. You don't have to indulge in those type of foods. You can still have healthier options in a restaurant. So it's just a mental switch that I'm working on. And that's another one of my problems. When I do eat out or when I do quote unquote indulge, mm -hmm. I want way too much. But that comes from me not having balance in my diet. Right. I was, you know, I, I deprive myself for way too long. And then once I do indulge, I overindulge. Right. But I've learned, that's another thing I'm learning to 
So now it's like I'll, the, I'll make sure I'll give myself a quote unquote cheat meal every two or three days. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? And that stops me from splurging. So we just pulled up to the venue. It wasn't that bad of a drive. We didn't hit any traffic. That's great. Hey, for the event. Hello. So the venue's pretty dope. I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, they got some amazing artwork on the walls. Let me check this. So, for my audience that isn't familiar with Rob Hill Sr., he's an author. He's so much more than just an author, though, and, but he's a really good friend of mine. He's become one of the people in my life that is kind of like a mentor, but more like a brother. But he has broken me down to myself on many occasions. Um, he's a very, very wise guy, um, has a lot of value to, to give to the world. So. I'm just glad I can be here to support him and to take part of anything that he has going on. He's gonna change the world. And I know that sounds cliche, but he's gonna change the world. So stay tuned. If you're not familiar with my man, Rob Hill Sr., follow him on Instagram, at Rob Hill Sr. And uh, yeah. Uh, truce, healing your heart after disappointment. Truce stands for trust, resolve, understanding, clarity, and evolution. Discussions between each other, you know, you got to kind of got to know new things about each other But we also had these two gentlemen walking around a little bit more familiar with the activity and they made some observations What did you see? My area of expertise obviously is fitness and a lot of people had fitness on their plate um, So I tried to I tried to get their frustrations out with fitness like what, what is it about trying to get healthy that frustrates you and why is it a burden on your plate? And I find that with most people, when they put working out, it's it's normally because they want to look good, right? And that's great. We all we all want to look good. But I find that when your reasoning behind working out and eating healthy is something deeper than surface level, it helps you, you know, stick to it. It, it helps you find the motivation to be consistent. So your why. You know, why are you working out? Why are you eating healthy? Like, for, you know, I've had experiences where um, when I was working out to lose weight, if I got on the scale after a week and I didn't see the number drop, I would lose motivation. I wouldn't want to do it anymore. But if I was working out because I'm thinking about the cardiovascular benefits, like I'm, I'm feeling better, I'm having better energy, I'm sleeping better, my skin is clearer, like these are the non-scale victories that a lot of us don't acknowledge. Um, so your why, you gotta understand that this is about health and wellness. You wanna make, I, I hate the term realistic, but you wanna make realistic goals um, and, and start slow. Don't bite off too much in the beginning. You, uh, I shared with this table that, you know, consistency is way more important than intensity. Um, so if you can commit to walking three blocks, three days a week first, I'd rather you do that than try to go to the gym eight days a week, you know? So start off slow and find your pace. So the event was, was awesome. I had a really good time. It was good to share energy with, with, with such intelligent people. Like no disrespect to anyone, but it's so rare that I get a I get to be in a room full of intelligent people. So that was my favorite part about the event. And people were transparent, people were vulnerable, and that's so rare, you know. Everyone's always so guarded. So it was good to see people actually open themselves up, talk about their feelings, like that doesn't happen. So that was my favorite part. Um, I, I don't know what we're about to do. I'm waiting for Rob 
Probably go grab something to eat or something. Anyway, I'm just trying to share the wellness with you guys. So get well, get money.